This is Twit. WPA3 uh, is still suffering from being closed. Uh, and, you know, I, as I said at the top of the show, I, I just it's it's so critical that something that is as mission critical as Wi-Fi be secure. And the idea that security researchers and academics are unable to to examine the protocol while it's in development is unconscionable. Yeah. And and these guys say as much, having just found a bunch of problems with it. Um, so WPA3 is as it begins to roll out, the actual devices are becoming available and so, in service, the researcher are, are beginning to play with it. Uh, and faults are arising. So they Matthew, didn't get the code from the Wi-Fi Alliance. No, they they had to no get help. a device. Oh, yep. Boy. Reverse engineer no it, hack it, yep. and then tell yep. them, guys, you did it wrong again. Yep. So Matthew Van Hoof, a researcher who was at the University of Leuven, KU Leuven, two years ago, where he discovered and revealed a severe flaw in Wi-Fi protected access to, uh, which is what we're all still using today. He named that attack crack, K-R-A-C-K, oh, yeah. for the key reinstallation attack. So today he's now at the New York University Abu Dhabi and working with another researcher at Tel Aviv University and also KU Leuven. Their new research paper is titled Dragon Blood, a security analysis of WPA3's SAE handshake. SAE stands for Simultaneous Authentication of Equals. Anyway, uh, we've mentioned here in our preliminary discussion of WPA3, that's all we've been able to have because I can't get my hands on a spec. Uh, in order to comment on it or even describe it to our listeners, um, you know, eventually it'll leak out despite their best efforts because this is the Internet and somebody will, you know, re republish the PDF of the spec. So, you know, someday. Uh, anyway, so uh, <coughs> WPA3 personal is the protocol which replaces WPA2's pre-shared key the PSK, pre-shared key, uh, with that protocol, the simultaneous authentication of equals. It's intended to provide more robust password-based authentication. So th th that would be the protocol we would use in our homes, for example, where, where we, would, we would come up with a password for our Wi-Fi and then give it to our, all of our devices. But instead of using the pre-shared key protocol that we have today in WPA2, we'd be using this SAE, the Simultaneous Authentication of Equals protocol, but in the but no users would be wouldn't even know that. They would still be having like, "Oh, what's my Wi-Fi password?" So our interface to it would would look the same. Um, that protocol, SAE, is known as Dragonfly, and it appears to contain, as these guys have found, a number, and this is what they said, of fundamental design flaws, which expose users to password partitioning attacks. In their abstract, it was about a 16-page technical paper, and since I have no access to the spec, I, I have excerpted sort of the key pieces of this to give us, our listeners, a, a sense for what they have done and what they found. So in their abstract, they said, the WPA3 certification, and th it, that word is important because it turns out it's a certification. The a WPA3 certification aims to secure Wi-Fi networks and provide several advantages over its predecessor, WPA2. And they do agree with that. They, they agree this is better than what we had before. Unfortunately, it could have been better still had anybody... Well, anyway, I'll, I'll stop beating that horse. Such as protection against offline dictionary attacks and forward secrecy. Yay for that. Unfortunately, they write, we show 
that WPA3 is affected by several design flaws and analyze these flaws both theoretically and practically. Most prominently, we show that WPA3's simultaneous authentication of equals handshake, commonly known as dragonfly, is affected by password partitioning attacks. These attacks resemble dictionary attacks and allow an adversary to recover the password by abusing timing or cache-based side channel leaks. Our side channel attacks target the protocol's password encoding method. For instance, our cache-based attack exploits SAE's hash-to-curve algorithm. The resulting attacks are efficient and low-cost, brute-forcing all eight-character lowercase passwords. Okay, listen to that. Brute-forcing all eight-character lowercase passwords requires less than $125 in Amazon EC2 instances. In light of ongoing standardization efforts on hash to curve, password authenticated key exchanges, so called PAKEs, that's password authenticated key exchanges, and Dragonfly as a TLS handshake. Our findings are also of more general interest, that is to say, just you know, beyond the its particular use in WPA3. They said, finally, we discuss how to mitigate our attacks in backwards compatible manner and explain how minor changes to the protocol could have prevented most of our attacks.